So I have a Wii Boost in my house, and let me give you the backstory before I get into why I bought one for the van. When I bought the property in 2015, I waited for the real estate agent at the mailbox when um, I was viewing the property. And because of my job, I have to have cell phone service 24-7, 365 because I often get paged into work. Um, so while I was waiting on the real estate agent to show up to view the property, I looked at my cell phone and I did in fact have service at the mailbox. Now the mailbox is about 75 feet from the house and my head and mind just said, oh, we got cell phone service at the mailbox. You'll have it at the house too. So go through the whole buying process, purchase the property actually have the keys in hand I come out to the house and I realize there is no cell phone service at the house so I walk back up to where the mailbox is at and there's cell phone service at the mailbox but no cell phone service at the house so in 2015 I bought a Wii Boost for my house and it works great it's worked great you know all along it's 2021 now and now I'm trying to solve an issue with a van that sometimes you can have uh, no cell phone signal or a very low cell phone signal. For instance, when I was at Turkey Foot Campgrounds in Kentucky two weekends ago to test the van out, I only had one bar of 3G. And although that allowed me to receive text messages, it didn't allow me to do my job. So that's kind of an issue if I'm going to be traveling and working from home. I need to be able to do my job. So I bought a Wii Boost. For the van, I got the Drive Reach RV, and uh, I've already opened up the box and kind of looked around. But let me show you what it basically has. Quick unboxing, huh? So it comes with the indoor or inside the van antenna. It comes with an antenna that goes outside the van, along with a mast which will raise it up above the roof of the van. It comes with a mounting bracket. The mounting bracket is actually made to fit on like an existing ladder, which I have the ladder. The sad thing is, if this is on the top rung of the ladder, the mast, which is 13 inches long, will not get the antenna above the roof line of the van. So I've got something I'm going to try for that. It comes with a spring to hook the mast to the mounting bracket. It comes with, um, looks like, yep, there's some uh, thread locker and another part to mount the mast. It has the actual unit. It comes with an AC adapter, but I ordered a DC adapter that should be here uh Actually, it should be here today. It's probably in the mailbox. And then, I got some wire ties. Some double-sided things, probably, to route the wiring. And a 25-foot piece of cable. And also, some hook and loop thread adapter. So, we're going to get this installed. I'm going to try to mount this a different way. I had some quarter-inch screws from when I built the van with a flat washer and a lock washer and a nut it does fit this so instead of mounting it on the ladder I'm going to try to mount it onto the side fiberglass roof extension so that's one thing it's going to be a little bit different it is raining today so on and off so I'm going to have to kind of be careful about cutting holes in the roof and that sort of thing but I'm going to try to get this done and here is why you can actually see that I won't be able to attach it to the ladder because the roof extends up past the ladder way farther than 13 inches. So I'm going to have to try to mount this probably right here on the side. Um, I think that'll work out pretty well because there's actually a place in the back of the van where I left this area open like the last foot of this. It's not covered by wood siding. And I did that intentionally in case I needed to run any wires to the side of this. So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing. But as you can see, there is water on the van. 
There's water leaking right here. It literally just stopped raining, so I'm probably going to have to wait a while in order to install this. And of course, I went out to the mailbox and I did in fact get the uh, WeBoost DC to DC adapter for this particular model. And uh, that way I can run it straight off the 12 volt solar battery bank and not have to use the AC inverter. So these are the U-bolts and the bracket adapters so that you can mount it to a ladder. Um, I'm not going to be using these. Instead, I'm going to be using some quarter inch bolts. They're actually stove bolts. They have like the little thing there on the outside. And it just so happens to be without doing anything. These fit these brackets perfectly. Just like it was made for it. As you can see there. So basically I'll just have to drill a hole through the fiberglass. Run the bolts through it. And then I'll brace it on the inside probably with a block of wood or something. So that way I can tighten them down and kind of spread the load over it. And I'll show you how this will be set up here in just a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-assemble some of this so that when I get a break in the rain, I can do this really quick. Okay, I basically mounted the antenna on the bracket. I figured out where I was gonna mount it at on the van. Instead of doing it on the side, I actually did it on the back. I marked the hole locations with a marker and I drilled the holes and then because that is fiberglass on the inside I'm going to have a backing board just to kind of spread out the weight so I don't have a uh, stand but I'll get that mounted up there and get it bolted in then I'll show you where we're at and there's what it looks like on the outside. I just have the screws stuck in there. I still got to bolt them in from the inside, so we'll go in and do that. And on the inside, it's kind of hard to see, but there are actually four screws down there. You can see all four of them. Now I'm gonna put this backing board on and then put the uh, washers and lock nuts washer, lock washer, and nut on there to hold it in place and kind of spread the weight around. Okay, so this is basically what it looks like now on the inside. It's tightened down. Eventually, I can run the cable through this other passage. It's right there, you see, but um, I knew there was a reason why I never finished up this corner because a lot of the electrical goes here, and I was like, you know, I think I'm just going to leave that unfinished. And then I basically just use like some stuff that normally the sleep stuff come in just to kind of like hide it better <laughs> that's what i do i hide stuff anyways on with the rest of the installation so on the back of the van this is what we got um, we got the cable here and then i put silicone on this backing plate because i did have to drill holes through the fiberglass but i'm most, mostly just want to make sure that silicone eased out on the top and the two sides the bottom likely ain't going to run up into there but on the sides and top are most important now what i've got the antenna is now above the roof line actually still got the silicone thing over here i need to take down with me i need to tighten up these pieces of where the uh, antenna fit together and then i'll bring out the rest of the gear and get it hooked up and we'll test it all right folks so I'm not doing a permanent installation on this because I want this to be able to be something that I can take out and use when I need it and stow it away when I don't. So I kept the cords coiled up the best I could. There's the inside antenna. This bigger line right here is the outside antenna. It's coiled up there, but it goes out the back. If it was raining and I needed to shut the door, I could just shut the door over it because there is like a weather seal that runs along that door there. There's the main unit. I have the DC to DC charger plugged in to my rear cigarette lighter port, which is what I use normally uh, when I need to use the air compressor to fill up the back tires. I've also got 
some 220 volt outlets and USBs back here, but primarily my power tower has connections on both sides because I have all this shelf space. And this is generally where I'm going to be charging and plugging stuff in. So I have it there. I kind of realized something though that when I flip this switch to power it on, I'm not going to be able to tell you, like, I'm not going to be able to show you the increase or change in the reception. You're just going to have to take my word for it. So let me flip this switch on. Let me check what the current cell phone signal is, which outside it should be nearly almost nothing. I'll take screenshots of it. That's what I'll do. So uh, I'll be right back. All right, so with the switch turned on, it took it about a second or two. It beeped and went from, it kind of like beeped between red and green. I'll probably show you that here in a minute. And then my cell phone immediately went from nearly zero bars of 4G. The 4G emblem was up. You couldn't actually see the bars straight to four or five bars of 4G as soon as it went green. So let me shut this off and show you what it does when you power it on. So I turned it off by the switch that's back here. I'm going to turn it back on. So as soon as it goes solid green, that means it's locked onto a cell phone signal. So this looks like it's working pretty good. I'm going to actually go out this weekend to a place that I know only has one bar of 3G in order to test this system out because it's, it's critical for me to be able to have cell phone on the road because I work from home and I work in IT and I get paged all hours of the day and night and I have to be able to respond to pages. Um, if I have that problem worked out, then I can actually start traveling. So anyways, again, I've got some experience with these. I do have a unit at home. Let me actually go out and show you the, the one that's in my house. I did kind of explain this at the beginning of the video. You can see that there is an antenna on the side of my house and there's a funny looking thing on the top of it. Kind of pointing over in this direction, which is up there past my truck is where the mailbox is at and I told you I had like one bar of 4G or two bars of 4G at the mailbox but by the time you get to my house which is actually lower in elevation you might not be able to tell that here but my house is lower in elevation by the time you get to my house the only place that I had cell phone signal was in the very top floor in this one bedroom up here so I had to get the cell phone booster so there's the outside antenna. I can go in and show you the inside antenna. There's the inside antenna. My house, by the way, is kind of like three floors. So there's the first floor. My second floor is an absolute wreck. And then down there is my third floor. But there's the inside antenna. And the inside antenna, I just stuck it where I had the best coverage in the whole house. The wire just runs along this banister and up around this door. Thanks, Sarah, for doing that for me. It goes into this room, which is basically my hiking gear room, which is really a mess. And it plugs in down to the unit that's down there on the floor. And then the cable goes out that window to get up to that antenna that's outdoors that I showed you. So, like I said, I put this unit in in 2015. It has worked great from day one. And uh, it's been a lifesaver. Uh, I've never had an issue with not having cell phone unless the power goes out. And I do now have um, some UPSs on a couple of critical things in my home. Matter of fact, you can see one down there next to a wood burning stove. It's actually a pellet stove. So I got a UPS there to keep the pellet stove going for a few hours. I have um, another UPS on a computer that I need for work that'll keep it going for a few hours. And I also have a UPS on the cell phones that'll last for a couple hours. 
but if the power goes out longer than say three or four hours those get depleted and then i'm done but that don't happen too often thankfully however with a van when i'm home with the solar system that's in it i could literally run an extension cord from the van into the house in order to keep like a freezer or something going for a while off of the solar system in the van so uh anyways thanks for watching god bless you god bless your families god bless your homesteads there was one thing i was going to show you so on the antenna that's on a roof there's actually a little you have to unscrew this and then disconnect these two cables then that cable can just go back inside with the rest of the unit and uh i can't do it because i need to hold the hand or hold the cell phone with one hand and unscrew it you know it'd be nearly impossible but that's what i plan on doing is just you know hooking it up and taking it down as needed and there's a little protective cap or something i can put on that to keep water from getting in it